Hello there everyone, you've tuned in UXW Bill. I've got something quite a bit different for you today, well off the beaten path of anything that I've ever made videos about in the past. And part of this is just kind of a show and tell sort of a thing, a little bit of an exploration. The rest of this is kind of an appeal to anyone who has knowledge of these little organs like the one you're looking at right now. This is actually an organ in a small church. I believe it dates from some time in the 1950s, maybe the early 60s. It is a tube type organ. I do not know what approach it uses for tone generation, but I believe that the amplification is entirely hollow state devices. And unfortunately, after many years of reliable service with only a few displays of character over the years, the situation has declined to the point where this thing is truly unreliable. What it's doing, at random times, it will burst into a loud 60-cycle hum. Sometimes it will do this just as a matter of course, from the moment it's turned on. Other times it comes and goes randomly. I have noticed, though, that when something like, say, the sump pump kicks on here, or a power line disturbance is created, it tends to be sufficient to throw this thing into a humming fit. So we might go ahead and pop the cover on it tonight. Just see what approach it uses toward tone generation and see what the audio amplification stage looks like. If it's something that I feel I'd be comfortable repairing. It's not a huge deal because they actually do have another, much newer organ. I think this one dates from the early 1980s. I believe it makes grand claims of being microprocessor controlled. It's a Baldwin organ two ranks on it. It works well, but it does not have it does not have the nice sound that the other organ has. So let's turn our attention back to it. I'll go ahead and see if I'm smart enough to turn it on because I'm about as clued up on organs as I am fashion sense. And we'll just see what we get here. There's a power switch over there, so it gives the pretense of being fairly simple, at least. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. The pilot light still works. That's impressive. Definitely hear some humming going on. Probably just power transformer. Sounds like maybe the audio amplifier came up and started working. I really don't know what you have to do to get one of these things to make sound. Let me push the pedal down here. I actually wonder if that soft humming I'm hearing happens to be an electric motor. This could be a tone wheel organ. Well, whatever might be going on here, if I press a key I can hear a change in the audio amplifier. I can hear a hum, but I'm never getting anything like a proper tone out of it. Okay, I am now. <laughs> Good golly, that took a long time for this thing to warm up. But it seems to be doing what it should right now. It does sound very susceptible to power line conditions, so I'm just wondering if this isn't a case of hilariously bad, or nearly hilariously bad, filter capacitors in this thing's amplifier and whatever other power supplies it might have. Because I have noticed that any time there's a disturbance in the power line, you hear it in this thing's audio. I guess we'll take a look inside it and see what we can see. OK, 
Okay, there's definitely something running in there, so I think this is probably a tone wheel organ. And just has electronic audio amplification and electromechanical tone generation. So it might not be that bad to just see if the amplifier and power chassis can be pulled out of this thing, but let's see what it would take to get into it, I guess. All right, well, while I'm sitting here with the key keeper and sounding very stupid and clueless about this thing, which I'll openly admit I am, <laughs> wow. you can see some of the magic within. There's a reverb tank down there, spring reverb. Two very good sized speakers that no doubt give this thing its very impressive tone. A note about oiling the generator, presumably the hardware that's responsible for generating the organ sounds within this thing. And then finally, here's a data plate on the back of it. If that tells anybody anything, I would certainly be interested in hearing it. We're going to take the back off of this thing and have a closer look at it. All right, here we go. About to foolishly reveal the magic within. Hey, there's nothing attached to it. That certainly helps. Wow, would you look at that. Well, there's certainly something going on up here. There's your little electric motor. It's got that classic antique smell in spades, that's for sure. Now somebody has been inside this thing because several of the screws were loose. And someone has also installed a three-pin grounded electrical cord, which I can guarantee you is not original factory issue. But speaking of things that are, I don't know if any of these are actually hooked up. Someone may have replaced them underneath the chassis. There's your spring reverb tank over there. It's a lot of fun to slap one of those because it sounds like in a sound engineering book I once read someone dropping a load of bricks in a cathedral. There's the oil for the organ. I wonder if that could possibly be the original oil or an oil that was approved by this thing's manufacturer. I don't even know if Hammond is still in business or not. I had reason to believe that they probably weren't. But there's a Mallory capacitor. And then here are two aluminum can capacitors. And yes, this thing is unplugged. They're not at all warm to the touch. Power transformer doesn't seem unhappy. I'm guessing this is what, a rectifier tube of some description? Let's see if it's got any printing on it to tell me what it is. It is a 5U4. That's exactly what I would have guessed. Guess I'll pop this power chassis out of here and just see what I can make of it. So here's the power chassis taken out of the thing. Looks like it has all of its original Hammond issue tubes in it, including the rectifier. But it wouldn't surprise me if this thing is very low hour. And now that I've gotten it out of here, I've also discovered, and I want to be very careful with this because it's exceedingly heavy, that no, nobody's ever put new capacitors in this. It probably needs to be completely gone over and replaced, recapped for safe and reliable operation. And I will probably suggest that be done to the church. I don't know if I want to tackle this myself or not, because I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now. I'm working full time and doing other projects besides. So I might approach somebody who's a little more accomplished in this on YouTube, like B. Anderson TV, if he'd be willing to go through this thing and just give it a good overhauling, preventative maintenance, so that this thing could continue to serve its congregation for many more years, if not decades, worth of use. But this is definitely a pretty neat piece of equipment. As I said earlier, there's the spring reverb tank. The two speakers. I think right here are the EIA codes. I would guess either CTS or QAM, given that this thing was manufactured in Chicago. But they could be something a little ritzier, too. Maybe a Celestion driver? It's hard to tell. And I think that all these slugs, as I was telling the keykeeper moments ago, are how this instrument is ultimately tuned. But there you go, there's a look at it, and if anybody out there has got more 
technical chops with regards to these early electromechanical organs, I would certainly be interested in hearing from you. Looks like maybe there's been a little spillage or something there over the years. But I would have expected to see more obvious signs of service on this thing than just the grounded cord, and I don't. There's a dead bug right there on one of the rivet holes inside of it. <laughs> oh, yep. I see it. Your flashlight's kind of drowning me out, but there, yep, you go. there it is. Well, what the heck. Let's tack on another postscript to the video here. I thought some of you might enjoy seeing the old girl powered up with the back off. Just so you could watch everything run and happen as it starts up and the fire bottles start glowing and the little motor down here starts running for tone wheel. Of course with the back off if anything decides to blow up I'm gonna literally be a sitting duck. <laughs> so let's hope that doesn't happen. That's what they do. Those are the filament heaters that you're seeing. Hopefully none of them start red plating. That would not be a good sign. That motor spins off too fast. Probably a push-pull output stage. I would imagine that's what these two guys right here do. What are they? 6BQ5s? Yep, those are output tubes. So thank you as always for watching, and I'm certainly interested in any helpful, constructive, or interesting commentary that anybody'd happen to have.